So yesterday my battery ran out on the camera before I really finished, which is fine because uh, after after that happened, I did some electrical work, and I'm probably better not. I'm probably better off not showing my electrical skills on camera. Um, but anyhow, we did get electricity wired to the kiln. Here's the outlet, and I'm fortunate because both of these fans, it looks like they're probably going to make it to this one single outlet, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do any more. As you can see, the fans are up, uh, the scaffolding is complete, and uh, we're getting extremely close. And something that I said yesterday about the ventilation on this kiln, and I'm gonna repeat it if I can, maybe I can explain it a little bit better, but I didn't use a board and batten siding on this thing, which means there's a lot of cracks on this lapboard siding. And it's my understanding that when you're drying lumber in a kiln, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that uh, heat is more important than, uh, than ventilation. You don't need a ton of ventilation to dry lumber. Uh, in fact, if you have too much, it can be a bad thing. So essentially what I'm gonna try first, and if it doesn't work out, I can always change it. Which, that's what's nice about this kiln. I can change stuff uh, and uh, you know, go back and do different things according to, if there are issues, it's kind of a trial and error type thing. So what I'm gonna try first is simply not putting any vents on the back of this thing. And the reason for that is there are a lot of cracks on the back of this kiln already. And I feel like if I put vents on the back, that's just gonna be a little bit too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna seal up as much as we can. We're gonna put some trim on the corners of this thing where those angles meet, those wall angles meet, because there's big old holes there. Um, and uh, well, that's pretty well it, I guess. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna load it up. And actually we're gonna put stuff on the floor as well between the timbers that are going down for a base layer for the stickers and uh, we're gonna put tar paper between those to seal up the cracks in the floor as well. But I uh, just wanted to show you all this. These are the timers that I'm gonna use. They are just uh, cheap 24 hour timers that I got at Lowe's. There's gonna be two of these so these fans can be run separately. And um, we're just gonna use these. Uh, we're gonna set it to maybe an hour after sunrise and for the fans to go off maybe at sunset or an hour after sunset or something like that but uh, we're gonna go ahead and stick these on and see how they work and something else I wanted to mention what was it oh something else that I wanted to mention uh, yesterday I don't know if I did a very good job explaining this but I'm only gonna put two fans in this kiln and the reason for that is the original design that I was looking at had uh, was a 10 foot wide kiln and he only had one fan this um, this kiln is 20 feet wide, so I don't see why two fans for a 20 foot kiln won't work just fine. I did test the kiln some yesterday to check for airflow from these fans, and I do seem to get a fairly even airflow out of one fan per side. Um, I mean, there's a little more airflow in the middle than on the sides, but um, I really think it's fine. We'll just see what happens. And here again, the beauty of this kiln, I can always add more fans if I want to. This is not a permanent setup. This is trial and error. I can mold this kiln to exactly the way that I need it. So uh, essentially we're going to do a trial run. We're going to get some tar paper and timbers down. And we're going to put tarp on this right here to create a seal between the main chamber and the dead space but, uh, on the back of the fans. We're going to do that as well. And uh, of course we'll allow uh, for the back of the timber, for the back of the stack of lumber, we'll allow for that to be open so airflow can do what it needs to do. And uh, besides that, we'll uh, we're just going to do that. and We're going to see what happens, guys. I really appreciate you watching these videos, and uh, make sure you hit that like button. And uh, thanks for following this. Speaking of trial and error, guys, I just wanted to put this in here as an example of uh, how th how things can go horribly wrong so quick. Uh, these are my timers that I was telling you about. They're just simple mechanical timers. And I installed this right here yesterday. And the, pro the problem that I'm having is this goes in up here, but then this doesn't fit between the, the outlets over here. And this doesn't fit between the outside wall and, uh, and, the, and the timer. And on, t on, t on top of that, this one right here, this outlet is designed such that there's a wide receptacle or a wide terminal over here and a narrow one here, so it only fits in this outlet one way. So we're going to have to figure out something else as far as this little outlet goes because this, um, obviously this will not work. 
Uh, what's my idea is to have these two these two outlets or these two plugs meeting in the middle right here and they they would meet but um, yeah this is going to be an issue that we're going to have to fix so I think what I'm probably going to do as far as this goes is since there's a possibility I may need to add fans on this kiln uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this outlet over here uh, to more to a more central location for one half of the kiln and I'm going to get I'm going to uh, wire another outlet to that side so that I'll have the capability of putting more fans and more timers eventually if I need to uh, but yeah that's kind of a kind of a bummer that one's not going to cut it so before we start working on the floor of this kiln we're going to have to get some of this trash out of the way because uh, So all we're going to do on the bottom of this kiln is we're going to put these 2x4s down. Oh, I'm not sure exactly how far apart they're going to be yet, but they're going to be permanent and they're just going to create a foundation for uh, the wood to lay on top of. Um, and that should give me plenty of airflow up under these things as well.
We got all the timbers down on this kiln, the bottom of this kiln, and what we're going to do now is uh, I've just got some medium duty tarps that I got at Tractor Supply. These are actually on sale, so I got a little bit of a deal on them. These are 10 by 12. This kiln is 20, uh, 20, 21 feet, something like that long, about 20 feet, I think, long, and it's going to be something like five feet. Uh, probably actually six feet from there to there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two tarps on the back to create a seal between the main chamber of the kiln and this dead space to force air through these stacks of wood. We're going to create, uh, we're going to put two tarps back here and uh, we're going to put a tarp in the middle so that I can uh, use this as two different chambers of the same kiln. So let's go ahead and do that. solid plan for how I'm going to hang this, but I'm just kind of making it up as I go. to see if I could give everybody an idea of what I've done here and I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the video quality I'm in cramped quarters for one thing and number two it's raining outside so there's not a lot of light but as you can see I've hung this tarp from a, uh, a piece of lathing up there that piece right there and uh, after that I came back at an angle and actually screwed it to the top board on that scaffolding for the fans and at first I was nailing it with a four penny nail but then I decided that that nail is so sharp on those edges of the head that uh, it just wasn't a very good idea so I ended up putting roofing screws on it because it's got that little rubber grommet on there and I think that'll do a good job protecting it so once we get some lumber in here what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and drape this over just the very top of the back of the stack of lumber and that should allow air to circulate down and through the stack just like that. Guys the really great thing about this tarp material right here even the cheaper brands is that it's made out of essentially a ripstop material so once you get a little tear in it like this 
once you get that little tear they won't tear anymore so it's very very strong very very difficult to get it to tear so that's why I felt comfortable with using it for uh, for this application